Alright, welcome to the basic guide of how to play Legends Reborn. Um, so if you haven't already, you'll need to create an account with Gala Games. You just go to the Gala Games website, create an account, and then you'll want to scroll down to Legends Reborn and install the game. Um, and now we'll get stuck into how to create a deck and then we'll go on to actually how to play the game. So feel free to skip forward to how to play the game. Um, I'll put some timestamps in the description. So once you've downloaded the game, you'll want to go into collections here. Now this is a playtest, so most of this will be relevant when the game is fully released, but some things might change, so just keep that in mind. The first thing you want to do, like I said, is come into collections and create new team. Um, this is the deck I've already created, so this is the one we're going to use, and you can mimic this one. Um, but I'll just show you how to create it. So you come into create new team. These are the heroes that you can select from. So you can see it says limited time. So at the moment, um, the way the game is going to be played is there's going to be a rotation. You can think of it like a season or a rotation of new creatures and heroes that you can use every week or every how long they decide decide the um, the season will be or the, the free rotation will be. So at the moment, these are the heroes. Um, and we're going to use the Necromancer. Now, why do the heroes matter? They're going to generate hero cards. So you can think of these as kind of like your ultimate cards. So as you play cards throughout the game, you'll generate energy, which will, or a particular type of energy, that will generate you a hero card. So for example, it might be Siphon Energy, an area attack, or different types of AoE buffs and debuffs. But then click Next, and this is where you'll create your deck of five creatures and the spell cards that they each will generate when they um, perform an attack. So for this one we're gonna select the tree and this is generally how we in what order we're gonna play the creatures when we start playing. The Phoenix, the Foot Soldier, Hippocampus, Hippocamp and the Air Elemental. Once you've selected your creatures, you can now start selecting your spell cards. So these are all, well these will change from creature to creature depending on what class um, of creature they are, so Shaman, Warden, Healer for example. Um, I'm not going to create the deck from scratch but we're going to go into the deck I've already created and explain which um, spell cards I've selected. So we go into the deck I've created, click edit just to show you um, if you wanted to copy this. So the tree who we're playing first is going to use a lot of thorns and defensive cards and healing cards. So you'll just have to spend some time and go through but we've got wrath, um, barb cocoon, death roll, fearless and so on. The Phoenix will be generating more magic cards. So you can see here it says um, trigger uh, a magic attack versus trigger a normal attack. So the only way you can do a magic attack is by using a card as opposed to physical attacks which you could use drag attacks or a card which we'll see later if that doesn't make sense at the moment. Um, then we come to the Hippocamp who is also will be dealing magic damage so generally you'll see that I've selected um, a lot of magic cards and same with the air elemental and then the foot soldier is more these trigger attacks because he does um, attack damage more than magic damage. The other cards you'll see that I've selected are a lot of Cleanse, Erase and uh, Freeze which is a little bit more advanced but it'll make sense as you start playing the game. Alright, so once you've created your deck and I'd suggest copying that deck there, we're going to go into a game and start showing you how the mechanics works. Okay, to start, so to start a game you'd either go play and you would do a rank game. This is from 
uh, this selection here, so you click start game and it would start searching for an opponent. Um, but for this, we're just going to go to practice and start. So as you come into the game, you'll place your first creature, which I've already done. And on the first turn, you're only going to have 20 in energy, like you can see here. Um, so we'll just skip this turn and down the bottom here now we've got that 20 energy that we didn't use that we'll be able to use next turn and you can see this next turn we've got 30 so each turn it goes up by roughly 10 up to about 100 energy towards the end game um, so we can utilize 50 energy in this turn now for this deck that we're using um, we're mostly going to have one creature on the board at a time maybe two um, but you can have you know, five, all five creatures down at one time. Um, they just cost 10 energy to place. You can see the opponent has two at the moment, um, but for the purpose of learning in this deck, um, we're just gonna start with the tree. Now, basic mechanics here are, you can drag attack, which will cost 25 energy and do 38 damage where my cursor is. The 44 here in blue is magic damage, which you'll need a card to be able to do. So you can see the cursor here, I've just clicked on my creature and we're going to point it at the wisp here. And every time you do a drag attack it will generate a card. If you use a, a card to do magic damage it won't generate you a card. Alright, I'm going to save my... Oh, we'll do another drag attack. And you see my energy goes to zero and it will automatically end my turn. He's just done a drag attack and you can see his passive procking here. So each creature has their unique passive. Uh, if you click on the creature here, so the Ent generates uh, regents or heals when you place thorns on him. So this is the idea behind this opener. We'll be placing thorns to keep him healed up and be doing return damage when they attack him. And then we're just dragging it dragging attack to generate more cards. see the buffs and debuffs above the creature's head you just have to click on them to get a description um, for example regen and counter attack it's going to be you know it'll take some time for you to, to be able to recognize all of them um, and that's why we're keeping this deck pretty basic to start with see as you start playing multiple creatures at one time it's a bit more to keep up with so we're just going to place another Thorns and which will heal ourselves up and also place another Thorns in us. We'll save that 15 energy. So you could see that some of these creatures are a bit more individual which you could play individually um, but other creatures have more supportive buffs. So the Phoenix here puts an auto revive on anyone below 51% HP. Um, other creatures might buff creatures um, either side of them, so that's when you'd start playing multiple creatures at once. Okay. So if we attack here, you'll see he'll do a counter attack on us. And we might just place a defensive card here and save our 20 energy. So obviously we're placing, we're uh, bursting a bot here, so they're not going to be playing optimally, but I'll still be able to show you how this deck works. So now that he's below 50% HP. I'm going to use 10 energy to play the Phoenix, which will give us a revive here. We can then drag attack or place another Thorns here. Um, so you can see this card gives us Thorns and does a, a, an attack. If 
you notice here down the bottom here just under our hero you've got this bar that's been generating this will generate every time you use a card so not drag attacking but using a card this is what generates you the hero cards so we just keep that in mind It's a good idea to save arrays and so we just use that then but yeah it was a good idea to save arrays and cleanse for when um, the opponent has debuffs on them that or buffs on them that you want to get rid of or they might freeze you and you would use a cleanse for example um, so we could heal up a bunch here but we might just do some drag attacks into here So here the old chart generator hero card so we can show you what that does so you can notice now we're getting towards the end uh, later in the game and we're now using uh, we get any 90 energy per turn reason we're only playing one creature at a time so we could play other creatures here um, but playing it this way forces the enemy to only be able to uh, do damage on your one creature so he might have AoE abilities that could damage multiple creatures so if we're not going to completely utilize a creature playing it next to our other ones it may just be an advantage to the opponent I'll just use some cards here, so defensive buff and regen. And now we've got Siphon Energies as our hero card or our, one of our ultimate cards that plus zero energy. We can place it on our unit, our creature, do an attack, and it'll steal 40 energy from the opponent and it will receive 40 energy. As a general rule, it could be a good idea to target down an opponent's creature that has a high attack damage, which is their drag attack. Um, so for example, this guy, I, this creature I probably should have targeted first, because he has a very high attack damage. Because drag attacks are always quite easy to do. Whereas magic damage, uh, they would have had to have generated magic cards. Yeah. So we'll come in with the Hippocamp and we'll do some magic damage here. You can see there the magic attack card didn't generate us another card, it just does the magic damage. As opposed to the drag attacks. Oh. That's a very basic guide of how to play Legends Reborn. Um, there's obviously a lot more advanced things that you'll need to pick up on, such as the being familiar with the passes of the creatures, um, which which cards you want to be generating with your creatures, and what kind of order to play your creatures. But um, this is a good start because you'll be playing each creature one after the other generally, maybe the Phoenix for a revive, and you'll be able to learn each creature and how their passives work um, a little bit more um, kind of formally rather than a whole bunch of creatures all at once and there's a lot going on. All right, uh, lastly, yeah, the best way to learn is just, just to play uh, quite a lot, but I think that's a good start and we might come out some, with some more advanced um, tutorials or guides, um, but you can check out my other videos of my gameplay with other ranked opponents and I'm always explaining what I'm doing so that's another way you could kind of get used to the, um, the game um, but if you enjoyed that or got anything out of it make sure to subscribe and we will see you next time